and welcome back to Made Simple. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about the pro forma balance sheet. In the previous video we had gone over this income statement, uh, a pro forma income statement, and we're going to be using that to create the pro forma balance sheet. But before again, please subscribe, smash that like button, I would really appreciate that. So with the balance sheet, we're talking about assets, liabilities, and equity. An important thing to note is that assets always equal liabilities plus equity. Um, so those two always need to equal each other. Remember that moving forward. So we're going to start out here with assets. Um, and the first asset we are going to be talking about um, is going to be cash. And then we're going to talk a little bit about accounts receivable, um, inventory, if I could spell, inventory, um, property, plant, and equipment, or PP and E. And the last thing we're gonna put in the assets column is accumulated depreciation. Um, and this can be really tricky, so we're gonna talk pretty in depth about depreciation. Um, I think it's more of, it's one of the more confusing topics within the balance sheet, or items. It's one of the more confusing items within the balance sheet. All right, so starting out here with cash. Um, again, here we have um, this blank column, and then we have these months. We'll just take this, we'll copy that, and um, we'll just put those here. And for now, we are going to leave this cash column blank, or this cash row blank for within our balance sheet, and we're gonna come back to that at the end. All right, so when doing, since we don't have any actual data, since this is a pro forma balance sheet, we need to make a few assumptions with accounts receivable, as well as with inventory. So with accounts receivable, we need to determine how many days it takes for us to receive that cash or to turn over this accounts receivable. So accounts receivable is basically like saying, well, we're, you know, a lot of people don't pay in cash um, and they might, you know, pay with a credit card or something like that. And that takes a few days to transact. Um, so we don't get the money or that revenue right away. And if you remember from the income statement previously, we use the examples of selling socks, right? And, and socks are pretty cheap, you know, it's not a huge expense. So we're gonna say that our accounts receivable is or that turnover is gonna be pretty low. And we'll say that it's, you know, let's say five days. And then our inventory, we need to know how many days our inventory is in stock on general. So for inventory, we need to know how many days that our inventory sits in a warehouse or, or wherever it is um, before it's sold. And so these are socks. Let's say that you know we, we sell them pretty quick so we don't keep a huge inventory. But let's say that it takes an average of, let's just say 10 days for that inventory to, to be sold. So here's where the calculations come to play. For this first month, we're gonna do five, or you know five days to receive that, that payment or that accounts receivable, right? We're gonna take that and we're gonna times that um, in parentheses by using our revenue for that month that we determined in our income statement. So that total revenue for the first month, but that's in months, so we need to put that into units of days, right? So we're gonna divide that by 30 to get um, the average per day, and then we're gonna times it by five days to get this. And we're gonna do the same thing here for inventory. All right, so we're gonna calculate inventory in a similar way, but we're gonna do it by taking that 10, and we're actually gonna lock that, um, and we're gonna times that by the next month's cost of goods sold, so month two, and then we're gonna times that, or divide that by 30 to put it in units of days. I'm gonna go ahead and lock this one as well so we can drag it across here. And we'll just drag it across and we will sum up this and drag that down as well. All right, so for property plant equipment, this is kind of just a guess, but since we're selling socks, you know, and our products aren't super expensive, uh, we're not. We're going to need minimal equipment. Let's say we, you know, we put logos on the socks or something. So we're going to need a, like a stamp to put our logos. 
um, and we're going to need, you know, that press, um, and maybe we have, you know, something that puts tags on the socks or something like that. Um, but what we could do is, you know, go back to our third sheet here, and I've kind of already set it up, but we have, you know, a label maker for the socks, and then other, you know, that could be the stamp or, or to put tags on or something like that. So let's say that our total property plan equipment is $550. All right, um, and we're just going to use that in month one, and that's just going to remain the same because we're not adding to it um, every month for the total there. All right, so here with accumulated depreciation, it gets a little tricky, um, and we're going to use a formula, so slow the video down um, and stay with me on this one. Um, but before we, before we go into that, please subscribe, smash that like button. I, can, I would really appreciate that. So accumulated depreciation, what you would do, we're gonna use an if statement actually here, um, and we're gonna do a logical test. So depreciation is based off our property plant equipment, and what depreciation is, is it's basically saying, you know, my, my equipment that I bought isn't gonna last forever, and eventually it's not gonna be worth anything. So, and it's kind of a made up number. And so we need to determine the useful life of our property plan equipment. And it makes things simple. Let's just say that the useful life of our equipment is 12 months. So then at the end of 12 months, we will hit $0 or essentially $550. And that equipment will be on paper worthless. Even if it's still working or not, it will have been depreciated fully. So the logical test will be the previous month depreciation if that is less than the property plant equipment amount then we're going to continue um, on to our calculations but we are going to lock that cell um, so if that's true what we're going to do is take the property plant equipment again lock that divided by the useful life which we said was 12 months plus last month's depreciation. All right, and if it's false, so if it's already reached 550, we're just gonna display the 550 and we'll go ahead and lock that. Hit enter and you'll see, let's do some quick math here. You know, if we take 550 divided by 12, that's rounded up, that's $46 a month, right, for our accumulated depreciation. So we drag this out and we know that we did it correctly because here on month 12, um, we have 550 and we said it would fully depreciate in 12 months. So let's say, for example, that you know our, our uh, useful life is actually 10 months. We'll go ahead and try that. So our, our depreciation is going to, our accumulated depreciation is going to increase per month, but you'll see here at month 10 is when we reach our depreciation, and then the next months, um, we just level out there. But we'll go ahead and switch that back to um, undo that and switch it back to 12 months. So moving on, these are all the assets we're gonna be talking about today. If you had questions of these, please leave a comment and I'll try to explain the best I can. But here we have total assets. So now we need to um, sum up our total assets. But something that's tricky, and we should probably type this in here, is you subtract the depreciation. So technically this is a negative number, right? So it's less accumulated depreciation. So what we're gonna do is total assets, we're gonna sum those, and then we are going to subtract the accumulated depreciation. And go ahead and drag that across. All right, um, and I'm gonna put this in italics here. Um, now we move on to our liabilities and stakeholders or shareholders equity, right? And the first account we're going to talk about here is accounts payable. And this is another one we need to make another um, assumption like we did with accounts receivable and inventory. So accounts payable is basically saying like, hey, we owe people money but we're not paying it right away. You know, we we have time to pay that back um, for maybe our supplier or, or something like that. So let's say that on average we take, let's just say 
Same with our accounts receivable. We'll ta we, we'll, it takes us five days to pay back what we owe. All right, and the formula for this is gonna be the, so in quotes, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this number that we just assumed, lock that, and we're gonna divide it by 30 days in a month, and then we're just gonna multiply that by this month's total cost of goods sold or total COGS here. All right, and then we can go ahead and, all right, and then we can go ahead and drag this across, um, bring this down, delete those. All right, so then moving on from accounts payable, we're gonna do a couple other pay payables, wages payable, rent payable, interest payable, income tax payable, long term debt, and then that will get us to our total liabilities. So with wages payable, what we're gonna do is take the previous month um, and since we don't have months there, we're just going to take this month, since this is the first month, and we're just going to take from our income statement the labor. All right, and then what we're going to do is take the previous month's labor or wages payable plus this month's labor, and we're just going to continue to do that for every month. And so with rent payable, we're gonna do a very similar thing here from our income statement. We're just gonna take last month's rent payable plus this month's rent expense, and we will just drag that across as well. Interest payable, we're gonna hold off from doing that for now, but let's just say on our interest, let's just say that on our long-term debt, our interest is, let's just say 5%. And then we will come back to that. So income tax payable is also the same. So go to our income tax expense, and then we will take our income tax payable plus this month's income tax expense. And we can drag that across. And actually, um, realizing now I made a little bit of a mistake these this is not correct this totals column uh, generally it'll just be that it since this is kind of more of like a running tally it's it's generally this this just this 12 months so we're just gonna delete this column in general um, so then our long-term debt we're gonna come back to that as well and we need to total our liabilities so we just add all of these up and we can drag that across as well all right, so then for our equity section, um, we have paid in capital. We have retained earnings, or RE, as well. Um, and then what we're going to do is total those for our total equity. Um, for this example, we're just going to assume paid in capital as zero. Um, for a pro forma balance sheet, not super important, especially in this example. So our retained earnings, um, since this is the first month, we're just gonna select that net income. But the formula for retained earnings is the previous month's net income or retained earnings plus this month's net income. And then totaling these, super simple, whoops. We just total these two rows and voila. Hopefully you're sticking with us. Um, if you're still here, please subscribe, smash that like button. Um, we're almost through the pro forma balance sheet here. So then this last column will be the total liabilities and shareholders equity. And that is simply calculated by the total equity plus the total liabilities that we, we had there. And there we go, our total liabilities and equity. But as you'll recall, 
looking back at our total assets, it's a lot lower than our total liabilities and equity. If you recall, in the very beginning of the video, I mentioned that assets always equal total liabilities and equity. So, and but you'll also remember that we've left a couple of these columns blank. Interest payable, long-term debt, um, as well as our cash here. So let's go back. Let's say to start our business, um, I mean, we needed 550 for the property plan equipment. Let's just say we took out a $1,200 loan. Um, and that will just remain the same. We'll just take that one-time loan for these, this first year. All right, so we have our long-term debt. So interest payable is a little tricky. Now you might think that interest payable, oh, it's just the interest I'm paying on my, my loan, on my debt. Well, interest, if you recall here in the, the income statement we did, the interest expense we left at 0% just to reduce complications, but that is calculated off of our operating profit. And so this actually needs to be 0% um, to keep everything universal or the same throughout both both uh, balance sheet and income statement. So this essentially is the same formula um, is the same formula as these payables that we did. Essentially it's you know the last month's interest payable plus this month's interest expense. But we know that this will just be zero all the way across. And so I save this for now just to kind of explain the correlation that it is not correlated with your long-term debt, but rather with your um, operating profit. All right, so now that we have our long-term debt, um, we'll notice that our total liability and equity increased even more, and it's much different than our cash here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna down here, we're gonna make a um, just a little, a little row called difference. So what we're gonna do is take the total liabilities and equity and we're gonna subtract that from total assets. And that's gonna give us this number. And what we're gonna do is then put this, these numbers into our cash. So essentially we want this difference to equal zero. And then we know that, that uh, liabilities equal assets. Well, liabilities and equity equal assets. So we're gonna put that 9036 up here in the cash column. And we see that I did my formula incorrect and forgot to include that line. So we'll go ahead and do that and drag this across again. And we'll see down here that it comes to zero. So then basically you just need to do that for each month. This is kind of the most time consuming part because you manually have to enter it, but stay with me while I, I speed it up and, and plug these numbers in. All right, so we have filled in this whole cash column and this and then we get get zeros here. And some of these are in parentheses because there's a couple decimals. I didn't bother with the decimals. Um, I just put in nice whole numbers here. Um, so we'll see that we have quite a lot of cash that we could be using to maybe use in other areas. So that's why this pro forma balance sheet is super useful in conjunction with the income statement because you can see, well, I have all this cash. Instead of holding on to it, where, where can I put that into? Maybe I'm gonna increase R&D, or maybe I'll increase labor. And so what you can do is essentially, you know, play around with it. Maybe I wanna increase R&D to $90 a month, you know, and then I have to go back and change this number, but I'll have less cash, right? So as you can see from this example, I mean, we, we do pretty good. We do pretty good selling socks. All right, so that is the pro forma balance sheet in a nutshell. If you have questions, please leave a comment. And before you leave, subscribe, smash that like button. Thank you much and have a great rest of your day. Bye.